I am DM Zone, this is Gamers Oasis, we're going to paint some Riflemen for Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Okay guys, so I want to talk real quickly about the theory and the concept behind painting these miniatures. These are our war miniatures that are designed to be painted in large numbers, designed to stack up next to each other. They'll kind of blend in. Usually when you go a little darker with these, they tend to look better than if they're all super bright. Super bright tends to make the imperfections stand out a little bit. Um, and you can get away with a lot more with them being a little bit more subdued while still bringing the different colors for each unit type. And I'll have pictures at the end of this so you can see what I'm talking about. Alright, so the primary thing that I did is I painted this black. That gets it started off with a darker look. I then went and highlighted it with white. This white highlight allows you to bring uh, the definition to, into the miniature so that you can see it when you're painting it and you can see the separation between the miniature. It also allows you to bring that out with slight details with the, where the dark spots are darker and the, lights and the higher spots are, are lighter. This creates a natural shadow type of feel and look. Because reds don't work well with black, um, you have to go red first and then black on top. Otherwise, you have to repaint it white and then go back over it with red because red really has a hard time painting over black. So I went ahead and did the next color with the red. I did two sections that were uh, diagonal across the miniature to make it have some contrast and you can see which way the miniature is facing and to give it sort of a uniform appearance without it necessarily being a full uniform, um, if that makes sense. Because these are supposed to be more commoner types. Alright, so now that I've got that, then I went ahead and did the exact opposites of the red to give it some symmetry. More, again, more of a uniform look without necessarily being a full uniform uh, in black. Now, I have two different types of leathers that I'm using in this. Uh, these miniatures are lightly armored, so even though it looks like it could be a breastplate, I went ahead and went with a leather breastplate instead of a metal breastplate. Um, I could see it being either way. I really like the leather look. I think it came out well. I also painted gloves on these. Uh, for whatever reason, when I painted them, I thought they had gloves, and I thought it looked weird to have one glove on one hand and not glove on the other hand. And then, it, it's, it's okay. I like it the way it came out. I think it gives a little bit of a thing. Looking back on it, they probably weren't wearing gloves. Um, but you really can't tell that, I think, when you look at the miniatures. So it was a choice I made. And sometimes when you're painting miniatures, you just have to make a choice and go with it. And then if you're wrong, then you try and hide the fact that you're wrong or just be okay with the fact that you made the wrong choice. And then know next time when you paint that you're going to go ahead and do that differently. Um, now I did do a second brown. This one's a little bit more rich and a little bit uh, lighter color. Um, normally when you're doing two different browns, you put the lighter color on top to create what looks like more distance. It doesn't make the miniature look as flat. Um, in this case, because the brown was on top of the brown, I actually did the lighter brown first because where the dark brown met the light brown, it would create the darkest place on the light brown. Um, that would mean that it would create basically a line all the way across, thus separating the two browns greater than if I painted a light brown on top of a uh, dark brown and then maybe done an ink wash over it to create that same look. You can get there both ways, but I felt that since both of these were basically washes anyways, uh, well they're sort of a thick wash, more of a glaze. And I'll get into the differences between glaze and washes and all that type of stuff. And the different type of brushing, like dry brushing, wet brushing, that type of stuff. Uh, and highlighting when I, in other videos. But anyways, let me get back to this. So I felt like because I was painting an army using two different glazes with the high color being darker than the low color, where it met would create that naturally and I wouldn't have to do a second time painting over that area to get the same effect. It was a choice I made. Um, as far as the feathers go, I've gone ahead and painted them orange. Um, I did a single color orange. Oftentimes if I'm doing a higher level painting, I will do uh, more dramatic colors. I'll put some yellow in there, yellow-orange mixed together, bring out some highlights, that type of stuff. 
Again, this was more of a lower tier type painting for an army. And I was just kind of pumping these out. I ended up painting about 12 of these miniatures, that's going to be about 40 of these miniatures in about 12 hours. That's 10 miniatures an hour. Um, that ended up being about my, uh, my ratio, I guess you could say. And if you were doing uh, painting service work like I used to do, if you can get six hours of painting in an eight hour day, the 10 hour day, you're doing pretty good.
Okay, guys. If you guys remember what I did, I had one mall that I test painted. I picked out the colors, kind of got the design of it set up. Uh, then I went ahead and did um, 10. And then I went ahead and did two batches of, well, I did a batch of five, and I did 10, and then I did two batches of seven. So the math of all that ends up being uh, five plus 10 is uh, 15, then two batches of seven is 14, and the one by itself is 15, so 15 and 15 is 30. So that's 30 men with ranged rifles. Next, I'm gonna start on about 40 spearmen. And I'll probably be starting that later today. So I hope to see you guys in, and I hope you enjoy this. Have a great day. Bye.